And good morning. We are live. We are live here in uh, the office of Saga Studios. It's a uh, beautiful, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's actually nice and sunny. Um, <laughs> no, you can totally look up at the sky if you want. Uh, it's a nice and sunny um, Wednesday. These shows are always on Wednesday, so I don't know why I'm confused here. Uh, these shows are always on Wednesday. They're a ton of fun. Uh, I'm really excited to be here with everybody. It's the new year. We did it. We made it out of 2020 into 2021, which will be the better year. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. I'm in the studio with Abra. Brett's doing something else in the in the living room. It's great. We're all just chilling. Um, uh, we've also, though, been very hard at work. We've been building up the Virtual Hero Academy program, which is going to be our way of giving everybody a chance to join into a community of people striving to be their best heroic selves. Uh, all the curriculum has clearly been prototyped, not just in person, but also over the internet. We've seen a lot of great results. Uh, everybody's learning, having fun, and we're doing it for super duper cheap right now. We want it to be affordable, so it's only $10 a class. So if you want to buy 10 hours of training, that's just $100. Five uh, sessions is 50 three is 30. That's our minimum because we want you to at least give it a shot more than once if you can. And the schedule will be completely open uh, to anybody who... Uh, it'll be open scheduling based on student availability. Whether that's right at the front or each week, we'll figure it out as we go. We've already created a great poll and seen some awesome uh, input from the students that will tell us when they will be available to train. So it's not just going to be one of these weekly things that you'll never make it to. It's going to work out for everybody. And we've already got about 18 people signed up. It's really going to be awesome and uh, helps us pay the rent here at Saga Studios. For the studio. For the studio. So everybody out there, can you hear me? Am I coming through clear? Uh, let us know in the comments. Yes, this is worthy it. Come join us, peeps. Thank you, Renard. Um, I hear things are going to be a little bit tighter in Quebec, so I can imagine people up there are going to want something to do uh, virtually going forward for a bit. Uh, let's uh, let's let's think about uh, today. What we're going to be up to today is going to be a return to morning routine classic. It's the first morning routine of the new year. So why don't we bring back one of the things that was actually good about 2020? Uh, the morning routine that we created. I still think it's a fantastic little program. It covers a lot of ground from you know mobility, body awareness flow work on the floor, up in the air, that's our action flow program, it's, it's totally vertical spherical movement, we're moving in all directions, and then we get to go into things like kung fu to really organize the body in a martial sense, and then we lock down into our planks because we hate ourselves, but that's how we love ourselves, we take a little bit of a break, we go back into our savat rounds, this order might be a little bit mixed up from what it was before. That's okay. Yeah, and that's fine. I think we were doing Tai Chi, then planks, then Kung Fu, then Savat, but we're just going to keep it like this for now. Go into our Savat rounds, get a little bit of cardio going uh, to, you know, kind of wrap everything up, and then we go into a stretch and cool down to bring us back down and center us for our day. We're going to try and bang this one out uh, because the workout should be quick and efficient at this point. It shouldn't be something that takes you hours and hours every morning. It should be something no matter what your routine is, and this is just our classic version of it, this just allows us to kind of know what's going on, uh, wake up our body and kind of feel that mind-muscle connection first thing in the morning. Doesn't matter what it is for you, these are just some tools for you to use. So why don't we get started and we'll see how things go. I'm going to step back, Abra's going to follow me with the camera, and we're going to do our best. And in the meantime, in the comments, let us know how you're doing this morning. Yeah, please comment. We want, we always want membership involvement as much as possible. If you have any questions or any concerns, this show is as much for you, if not more, than it is for us. Start with our top-down check-in, whatever you need to do for your head and neck. 
feel for all the crunchy spaces. Pull it through a little bit if you need to. Adding a little bit of tension, a little bit of weight. I like to kind of like just grab the base of my skull and just kind of like hang here a little bit, stretch out the vertebrae. You can even massage the neck if you need to. Just wake up those muscles. Push through the jaw a little bit. This is one that I've gotten from Brian Stoops. Push under. Again, not hard, just enough to really activate that tilt. And then here's one cool concept. I've got a mirror back there so I can see what's going on. I, I have a bit of, well, I have actually a pretty excessive um, neck bend. Uh, it's kind of another postural sort of issue that a lot of us have, especially with the cell phone age that we all go through. Uh, one of the best ways to work on this, as far as I can tell, is just to train activating it. So instead of being bent here like this, with our shoulders kind of slumped over, shoulders back a little bit, and then pull your chin back to your neck. And what you'll notice is that I should have a straighter neck here, and then this is kind of like another one of those Alexander sort of method sort of things where we're standing straight up. Uh, you might feel like you're getting a bit of a double chin out of this. That's okay for right now, just focus on the neck. Don't worry about your looks. Uh, although I can promise you, gaining an extra inch of height is pretty nice. Yeah. And it'll just organize the back and the chest completely. So let's just do a couple of those so that we can feel the activation. Tucking the chin under the skull a little bit. And then look towards the mirror. Okay. I am a little under lit. Uh, I'm going to change the ISO of the camera. Try 1,000. All right. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, shoulders. Let's just get into our shoulders. Do a little shimmying action. Do a little shrugging action. Do a little forward crunch, backwards crunch, forward crunch, backwards crunch. Let's pull across the body. Do those chain breakers that I got from Will Taylor down in Florida. Open up the arms, bent arm circles, just to kind of warm it up just a little bit, focusing on the shoulders. The weight of the elbows is going to kind of give a little bit more drag to it, which is nice. Go back the other way. All right. Let's push the palms out, really stretching through the fingers, really stretching through the palm. You should be pushing out as hard as you can, Iron Man Blast style. All right. Once that's locked in, small circles. So think about all locked into this chain. Okay, spiral out to medium circles. You don't have to count a number, you just have to go once you start feeling a little bit of that maximal effort. And then spiral out to big circles, really, really, really channeling the chest and the back. Almost like a big swimming motion. Now we can make some crane's beaks, so we can take the hand, squeeze the fingers together like a little crane, and go big circles forward, or were we going forward or backward before? Eh, whatever. Forward. Medium circles in. And small circles in. Just to stretch out a different part of the wrist and forearm. Let's just do a little bit of wrist movement. Again, you can always just push and pull against the joint, however you need to. Shake it out if you want. Go again. Thread the fingers, press forward, whatever works for you. You can press forward on the palms. Of course, we could do all that stretching it on the ground, but we're standing up because we're doing our top down check in. So we're just going to do it this way. All right, into the chest. Move it laterally if you want. Really feeling that spine creaking to life first thing in the morning. You can start doing Aubrey's favorite matrix move. Again, the hips aren't as involved yet, so you want to hold and stabilize everything under the chest. Go back the other way when you're ready. This is also a nice way to warm up the obliques. And 
again, that rectus abdominis. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> Woo! The thing down the center that gets you that Dragon Ball Z 12 pack. Because they have more abs than are humanly normal. All right. Well, I mean, I guess some of them are Saiyans. Anyways, now let's go into the hips. The simplest one that everyone knows, the bringing around town. The hula hoop. Actually, it's kind of fun to do it with your hands above your head. Whee! 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 Sound like that character from uh, Kung Pao. All right. Uh, we kind of missed the twisting of the body on the upper plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and again, I got, I got a little bit of this concept from Athlean X and Jeff Cavalier. He's really about isolating what part of the abs you want to go for for activation. So I'm going to squeeze my glutes a little bit, squeeze down into my pelvic floor, and really focus on firing also my uh, transverse abdominus, which is the band underneath your abs that holds everything together, especially on that circular sort of lateral plane across the body. And then what I'm going to do, just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to put my elbows out just a little bit, and I'm going to focus on pointing them in front of me. And instead of thinking, eh, eh, I'm going to squeeze the obliques. So if I'm turning this way, this one activates, and then this one pulls me the rest of the way. I'm just squeezing everything, feeling that rotational activation. It's very similar to when we do like our seated uh, silat like what I've learned from Kai, except we're really focusing on the rotational power of the obliques. The obliques aren't so much for this crunching motion, they're really for the rotational motion. And they contract to squeeze us across. If you want, you can even feel it as it activates, which is also gonna really help kind of activate the lumbar spine in that position. All right, well, we've already done the hips, but if you want to, you can just shake them back out. Go into the knees. Again, the exercise everybody probably knows from a million different warm ups and instructors. Go back the other way. Again, I like this one from Chop and Chop with a little bit wider stance. Chop and Chops. Yes. Chop and Chop and Chops. Like that's, I, I never understand it, but I love it. All right, into the ankles. Almost done with that top-down check-in. We'll have to ask the next time. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's one of those things that I don't want the answer to. Like, where is Tommy Wiseau from? I don't want the answer to that. I just don't. I want to imagine that he's a vampire alien from Transylvania. Basically, Frankfurter. Um, Frankenfurter. Thank you. Gosh, okay, I'm a bad person. All right, uh, let's now do uh, the hinges. So again... Skiing out, stretching the hamstrings, coming back up, pulling the arms behind you to flex the scapula, crushing the chest in front of you, getting a nice stretch through the upper body while stretching the lower body. And remember to push out, not down. All right, let's do our squats again. Uh, like I posted in that one video, activate the glutes, squeeze everything. So instead of dropping deep all at once, lower yourself down with a squeeze, push yourself up with a squeeze, just like you'd be practicing for actually lifting squats in a weighted position. Squeeze down, squeeze up. It's going to protect your knees. It's going to fire more muscles, more muscle recruitment. That's what we're looking for, for these morning routines. We want to recruit the muscles. If you want to create a jump out of this, go slow down, push up. Slow down, push up. Slow down, push up. You should be feeling that squeeze creating the jump, not just your quads. It should work together. Again, more muscle recruitment. More muscle recruitment. It's just like the Superman sort of thing. Boom, you know? Just have fun with it. All right. Let's go into the uh, calves, ankles for that lower stretch. Touch the ground if you want. Okay. It's a nice simple one. We don't need to jump with that today. And let's do our spill over. Chin to chest. 
Shoulders can kind of collapse a little bit. This is a very loosey-goosey one. Just working through the whole chain of the body. Sitting down slightly. Activating everything on the way back up. One vertebrae at a time until your chin is the last thing to come off. And if you want to set that neck back, tying in that little exercise from before so that we're not here as our end point position, we learn to train ourselves to be here. All right, let's do a little bit of flow work on the ground. Just crawl around. It's literally all I want you to do. Just figure out however you want to crawl, find some moves that work for you, and do each move five to 10 times. So for me, I'm kind of doing these gorilla shuffles where I'm throwing one foot back as opposed to just a normal gorilla. I don't know why, except that I think it feels cool. I feel like I'm getting something out of it. I like those. Yeah, I'm pushing with the rear leg, activating the quad to send me forward, crunching into the rear leg to activate the hamstring. I can twist a little bit in it and now might maybe send me on a more circular path and kick through, jump to the other side, kick through, kick through, kick through, activating the triceps to hold me up and sweep through, sweep through, sweep through, sweep through, sweep through, sweep through. Then I can sit on the ground in my S sit, hip activation, windshield wipe behind, what I call the rear, rear transition. I'm like, now I'm already getting my cardio started. Front transition into hip ups. If you need to, you can always support pillar, push up off the ground with your hand. Just make sure that you're not pushing into the wrist, that you're using it as one flowing mechanism. I even like to extend the fingers just to make that feeling of popping up. I'm going to go into an inverted crawl. Again, just to kind of pull, stretch my hamstrings a little bit more. Pulling myself across the ground. Coming back. Pulling myself across the ground. Switch over, push yourself across the ground. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn around in a circle. And I can push myself back the other way, push myself forward. Helps when you have a less tiny space. All right, that feels like a lot of good flow work. Do we have any comments, any questions? Not yet. So far, all right. Now one thing that's really fun for me right here is that I definitely pushed a little bit harder than usual. I got my heart rate already elevated. Any time that you start getting that going and you're moving into a different set of movements, if you're trying to do a high intensity workout, keep it up. But if you're just trying to like wake up, focus on rebuilding your parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system so you get that kind of meditative energy throughout the day, ground yourself in a little bit of a stance or lay down however you want. And focus on breathing from here all the way to here back out so I could do hold the ball or I could just relax the arms down like a yoga is, is a tree pose I think uh, tree pose usually has balancing. then it might not be tree pose got to get that yoga cert through ISSA yeah just relax again you can Tuck the neck back a little bit to focus on your posture. Bring things back down. If you get too excited in a workout, that's perfectly fine. But you don't want to blow the tires out by being too full, you know? You want to relax back down just a little bit. Got drool on my lip. All of my people. All right. A couple of comments now. Becca says, all is well. All is well. And Renard says, thou dost not say about tight space. I just bumped into my brother's door. 
Right now, you just gotta start practicing out in the snow, man. Because I know, I know Quebec is like all snow all the time. So, you know, just just go outside, do it nonstop. I don't know. I have no answers for you. Have fun. <laughs> that's it. That's my answer. Uh, if you're bumping into stuff, that's just that's just a lesson right there. It's gonna help you learn how to spatial awareness, spatial spatial situational contextual awareness. <laughs> I am such a jerk. All right. Let's go into our Kung Fu basics because now we're going to bring things up again just a little bit uh, now that we've got a nice stretched out body and then we're going to bring them back down into Becca's favorite, the planks. The first Kung Fu move and we're going to do a short number of reps just to activate the body. We're going to do 10 on each side, brush floors. Stand into a long lunge or a bow and arrow stance. Bend at the waist, scapular activation, brush through, chest activation, sitting back activating the hamstring on this side, stretching out the quad on this side. Swing back, go forward. Swing back, go forward. That's three, four, five, breathing pattern. Seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, it's really interesting. When I think about the muscles being activated, I stick to the floor a lot more. Forward, backwards, whatever. Way more of a workout when I think about the muscle groups. It's a good thing. All right. Horizontal chi raises, I'll do these at a slight angle. Pull everything together nice and tight, and then shoot everything to, to the outside, but still with that kind of same tightness, just on the opposite end. Breathe in, we'll do 10. Eight. Nine, ten. It's another good place to practice that neck activation so that you're not crunching over as much. All right, elbow to toe. We're going to do ten on each side. Kick out. Hands together at the chest like the Kung Fu symbol. Go down. One, two. And just repeat till you get to twenty. Breathe out on the way down. And on the way up. Nice little hamstring stretch. Calf stretch too. If you pull the toes up. Part of what makes it a hamstring stretch isn't just the elongation of the leg, it's the bending at the hip because the hamstring has to connect into the hip. And when you fold over while that extension occurs, that's actually what really stretches the muscle. Let's go for a few more. Okay, take a second, shake it out. Legs are nice and loose. Let's go into our vertical chi raise. I'll face this way. Breathe in, a little bit of shoulder width and a half action going on with your feet. Breathe in, raise up. Again, squeezing the back and the posterior chain. And then breathing out, shooting it down and out. Breathe in. Let's do 10 of these total. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. And that's it for the Kung Fu exercises today. Take a second, grab some water. Uh, the chi raises are power exercises. You can make power exercises out of the other two, but it takes a little bit more effort and they're kind of like your rest exercises. Even though one happens after the easy... Yeah, well, anyways. Um, the brush floors are really more like prepping your whole body. Anyways, the whole point being 
These will activate your whole body all the way through. They get all the chains firing, getting you nice, limber, but again, activated. So now that everything is nice and excited, we're gonna bring it back down into the plank exercises. And what you'll notice is that right from the top down check-in into the flow, into the kung fu, now into the planks, we're upping the intensity of the morning routine workout by putting less breaks in between it. Which means I have to talk less. Stephen King just tweeted something that's completely irrelevant to me. All right, let's do five rounds. Uh, I'm sorry, six rounds, because we've got to balance it out. Six rounds, 30 seconds a piece, nice and easy, but hold intently. Don't just flip flop through the plank. Squeeze, contract, hold it tight. Yes? Before planks, uh, Renard has a question. Yeah. Should the torso be facing entirely the feet with the elbows and toes and the is this for plank or kung fu? Kung fu. Uh, I'm a little confused about this question. The torso and twist about the side is facing the feet. Tell you what, um, let's keep going with the exercise. Renard, I will answer that at the end of the morning routine for you. Thank you for your question. It's always fine to post them throughout the workout, but I think in order to maintain the intensity that I was just talking about, we should probably save the answers for the end. So. Let's go into the planks. I'll answer your questions later, but keep asking them so that we have them ready to go when we get to that ending. All right, we have 10 seconds to prep. So you gotta get down, get down on the ground. I'm gonna go into my high plank to start. Squeezing everything. Squeezing the stomach, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the adductors together squeezing through the center of my chest, really, really, really adding some power into my uh, <laughs> core and chest muscles, not doing it loosey-goosey. And again, I can also bring my neck up to create a little bit of activation in the neck rather than tilting it down. I'm gonna go back down. Uh, I'm actually going to hold the inverse uh, just to activate the back and the quad, I mean the hamstrings a little bit more. So all I want you to do is just hold up and push forward just a little bit. Really set your weight into your feet. Squeeze your core so that everything is nice and tight right here. That'll really help with some stabilization. Squeeze through, extending the triceps. Really try and activate the back, not the chest for this one. This is what will pop you up. All right, it's not gonna feel like a lot at first, but it'll add up over these three rounds. It'll also stretch out your wrists a little bit, so if it's uncomfortable, just breathe and bear with me. You can zoom in a bit on this. I'm gonna stay on the ground. Rest period. I hope I'm doing this right. All right. Back up to high plank. Again, squeeze, 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 squeeze. It's not just about how long you can do it, it's about how intently you can do it. Get those gains. By squeezing like this, I think I'm also activating my lats a little bit, which is really nice. I'm starting to feel those good vibrations. One of Abra's favorite songs with Marky Mark. It's fun to dance to. It's fun to dance to. All right, now we're gonna go back into the inverted hold. I'll face this way. Again, feet are gonna be kind of pulling towards you. You can step out, pull a little bit more, extend through the triceps, squeeze the core. Think about the core and the hamstrings kind of creating a bit of an oppositional force. Your knees are trying to pull that way, your core is trying to pull this way. Nice little feeling of activation. A little bit of stretch to the quads. Ham, uh, your uh, hip flexors are also involved, obviously, because they're flexing. All right, relax back down. Right, high plank one more time. Really, really, really bursting with a little bit of sweat now. These maximal holds do it for you. All right. Squeezing creates 
that pouring out of the sweat. So the intensity is critical. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Have fun with it. Hi, Plank. Hi, Plank. I'm gonna get a little bit more camera center. And that squeeze is actually what protects my body while doing this type of stupid jump. All right, one more inverted. I'm gonna kind of show it from a backwards angle just a little bit so you can see what's going on back here. And that way I can look at the clock. So notice how this is deactivated and that is activated. I'm trying to keep my hands directly under my shoulders as much as possible. Stepping forward, my feet pulling together. Woo! This one's different. This is very different. Definitely feeling that lower core activating. Trying to pull my hands to my feet through the ground. All right, that's it for your planks. I'm gonna take a second, now that we're all warmed up and activated, and then we're gonna go into some savat rounds. This is where we're gonna really get into the cardio. Now, typically, when we would do the savat rounds, uh, we would do it in such a way that we would just do the holds. I actually don't want to do the holds right now. Uh, we're going to change it up a little bit. I would like to do the kicks with the proper mechanics and try and keep the cardio up. Now that doesn't mean that you just flail around like a crazy person. You can do that, but I want you to think about the activation of the kicks. And I want you to think about the chain of the leg into the back, into the arms. Try your best. This is really important to me. There's the old school savat where you would create these extension movements with the arms. I don't mind that because it's still activated. And what that does for you is that it, by firing the back, it kind of stretches you out, but you're not just loose up here like this. You're really pulling with each kick and that's going to make your back help support your legs. Because once all these are activated, they're going to take the pressure off the legs and it's going to hold you up. This hand can also be a counterbalance. The lats fire, keeping your torso up as opposed to tilted back, especially for the medium kicks. Once you get to the high kicks, you're going to tilt back a little bit unless you are freakishly flexible, which good for you. I am not there. But for a modern context, even if hands move around in performing arts or they flip back like in um, a more traditional Muay Thai, I want you to focus on keeping the guard in front of you. Squeeze the chest, not the back. Keep that center guard. Make sure that your abs are fired just in case someone kicks you or punches you mid-kick, which can absolutely happen. And keep your hands in front of your face. They don't have to be all the way up here, although that's one thing that you can do, really activating the deltoids to keep them up. But you want to have them at least at chin height. Uh, that's kind of where it relaxes. This is like the pocket of the hold. If you want to activate a little bit more and raise them up, that's fine. Just also, we're not shrugging our shoulders for right now. I don't really believe taking the shoulders out of the packed position is really all that helpful. I think squeezing forward is better than squeezing up, uh, unless you're like really intentionally blocking a punch. Because then you can actually pull it up for the block rather than have it there already and then it just slams through your face. So. When we're up and we're kicking around, have that guard up. I'm going to say two more things about that. Obviously, it's to protect you from any incoming strikes, but the other thing is that when the hands are up, that means they can drop down for that striking, for the punching connected to the kicks. If they're down here like this, you got to raise them up, which isn't that bad, but that's more like a big power move that you would be selling or a big uppercut that you would be selling. From here, in real combat, you want to drop quickly and drop your body weight in, especially if you're firing a high kick, because then you're dropping back down into the punch. So keep that in mind. We're going to keep the guard up while we're doing these rounds. You can punch, you can kick. I want you to move around, activate, bounce, get a little bit of a plyometric exercise out of this. Do your best. We're going to set for six rounds again. Six rounds. It's not that long. It's less than five minutes. So let's have some fun with this. I'm going to get up, 
I'm gonna hit the button. Abra, my head is cut off. There we now go. It is not. It's less cut off. Ten seconds. Just start with some fuetes. Keep the guard up. Maybe jabs, crosses. If you know the S series, play with that. Bounce and squeeze. Fuete, cross. Fuete, cross. If you're switching. Fuete, cross. Fuete, jab. If you're not switching. Keep the hands tight. That's one of my biggest issues is I tend to have this open palm sort of move from uh, Wing Chun and Muay Thai. Um, not Muay Thai, um, Wing Chun and FMA. I want to squeeze my hands together for now so that my fists are ready to go. And it's as if I was actually fighting with boxing gloves. Take a break. Now in this round, keep bouncing throughout the break round. Let's start adding in some sidekicks, some chasses. You can do ba or median. If you really want to do um, high, that's up to you. But it's not required. Really punch, punch, kick. Punch, punch, kick. Punch, punch, kick. Make sure that you're extending across the body. You don't have to do the full turnout rotation. You can do it like a little stab right here. But really think about this is the stab, whereas the fuete is the slash. It's spiking, but it's still slashing in. All right, take that 15 second break. Keep bouncing a little bit. Keep the, part, keep the cardio up. Let's throw in some reveres for round three. We'll do reveres front tall, and then we'll add reveres lateral later. Reveres front tall. Fuete, jab, cross, front tall, jab, cross, or cross, jab, fuete, fuete, jab, cross, bear, jab, cross, bear, jab, cross, whatever you feel like doing. Fuete, fuete, cross, bear, fuete, fuete, cross, bear. Add a little bit of a jump into it if you want. Halfway through, everybody. Keep bouncing, keep moving. It's just five minutes of cardio. You can drop your arms now, relax them, shake out the lactic acid. And then when that bell goes, it's fight time, bring them back up. Jab, cross, revere, fuete, chasse. Chasse frontal, chasse frontal. And notice how I'm sitting back, going right into my bounce. I'm sitting back, bring it back into my bounce. Again, squeezing my glutes on this kick, pushing all the way through. Fuete, frontal, frontal, fuete. 15 seconds break. We can add in a couple of chasse laterals, or we can switch into revere lateral as well, which is your hooking kick. All right. Chasse, lateral. Chasse, lateral. Let's start bouncing around. Jab, cross, lateral. Jab, cross, revere, lateral. Jab, cross, chasse, lateral. See how I'm bouncing on the ground? Jab, cross, lateral, chasse. Jab, cross, lateral, chasse. Jab, cross, lateral to sweep the guard, chasse to knock them back. All right, I think we're in our last round. Just blitz it. This is a fight. Win. Knock them out. Take the day. This is all about you. Do your best. Keep it tight and keep it strong. down just like we were talking about earlier walk it out just like I was talking like little league baseball after we oh, oh, oh. never really made it past coach pitch 
personally. There was kid pitch eventually. Then I got scared of the ball. Like 12. Bring things down. Obviously I'm doing it with my coffee because I'm a crazy person. You can do it with your water if you want. We did just put in a lot of work. I mean, one thing I'd love to stress about that last round, you need to sometimes, doesn't always have to be first time in the morning, uh, doesn't have to be a lot of times, but if you really wanna get stronger, as much as I believe in functional uh, measured training, this is one thing that I've learned after the last year, one thing I'm gonna be implementing a lot more, if you want to get stronger, you occasionally have to go all out. Now that doesn't mean injure yourself. That doesn't mean push it past the absolute point of your limitations. But what it does mean is go, okay, for this round, I'm gonna hit hard, I'm gonna hit fast, I'm gonna try and keep my mechanics. But even when my breath starts catching up with me and making me start huffing and puffing more, that's when you've really activated your aerobic cardiovascular system, where it's just like, I need oxygen, I need oxygen, I need oxygen. That recruitment and that output is what really builds your power reserves and how much power you can put out. Power training is usually the last step in physical fitness training. Uh, I really gotta look at those stages in the book and get them nailed down, but you, it's like being a power lifter. Heavy weight, moderate weight technically, but high reps. And the only way to get through those high reps is with good form. Uh, so like for instance, my ankles are bending out. If I want to build true squat strength, I gotta tuck my ankles in, activate my quads, no, not my quads, my glutes, squeeze everything together and sit up a little bit more. Oh, this is less fun. So, let's do some Stretching out, we can do our chat and chill at the same time. If you have any questions, feel free to type them up. I'm gonna just use my little green floor to stretch. Move around a little bit and then we'll do some passive activated stretching. So questions, comments, happy things. Okay. I like Renard's questions. He's always very investigative and he really wants to know how things work. I deeply appreciate that because if I had asked more questions, which I tended to, I tended to bother Fundy John Weeks a lot with questions and I think he had a lot of the answers, but I also think he wasn't 100% sure when he was younger. But I think it's really critical to ask those questions because those questions can lead to intellectual growth you don't want to overdo it and necessarily be a Hermione. But she doesn't really ask questions, she gives the answers. But you want to make sure that you feel connected to the material. So Renard, you asking questions is just clearly an indication of you want to really connect to the material. And intellectually, that's going to stimulate you and help you really know what you're doing a lot better. So kudos to you. So what are those questions? Uh, the first one was the one we were talking about before from Kung Fu. Should the torso be facing entirely Tilt up with me a bit. So you're asking about the elbow to toe exercise. Um, yes, you turn towards that foot. And I like to think about it as kind of sliding or scraping down. The elbow stays in line with the leg. And your chest should be parallel to your foot. So you shouldn't be over here doing it. You should turn this way doing it. So it's a single leg stretch. This one's not really as involved, although there's a lot of stability happening here. It really is, uh, there's a concept later in this Kung Fu. Here, I'll step across to here so you can see the foot. There's a concept later in this style of Kung Fu called biting your toe, where I've actually seen this. You can get your forehead or your mouth on your toe. Um, maybe better to wear shoes, maybe worse, I don't know. 
but the goal is to literally lean into that space, feel that extra stretch through the hamstring. And if you can, eventually get your head to your knee. Um, if you've seen like old Bruce Lee movies and he does like that full bend in, it's much like that. It's just that single leg variant of the stretch. The back muscles are also stretching out. Squeezing the glutes might create a little bit more support for that stretch to occur. Relaxing them will let you kind of dip a bit deeper. Uh, but yeah, the, the angle, if I was to face the camera directly, is straight down the pipe and the elbow is reaching for the top of the foot. I hope that answers your question. I'd like to move along to other questions, but um, maybe that gets it clear. What, is he asking another question about that? What is it? <laughs> now you're being too intellectual. Practice for a bit, Reynard, and then figure it out yourself. But yes, what's the question? Uh, different, different. Different question, yeah, of course. Uh, with planks, yes. I'm able, would going on the end of the toes be a good idea, or is it best to flex the toes? If you're able to, I mean, my, my answer for stuff like that is always play with both and see how you can get the maximal recruitment out of either position. Uh, a really good example, for instance, is I can stand, I can sit over here a little bit, it is like, for instance, if you're doing like a Seiza seated position, you can either do it from the flexed toes, well, I guess these are more extended toes, it's really kind of more of a flexed foot, I don't know. Anyways, or you can do it with the feet extended out. If you are actually able to do it by squeezing the feet and pressing into the tips of your toes, that's really interesting and I don't think that's a bad thing to practice. I'm actually feeling that a lot in my calves. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I must be a gastrocnemius or the soleus. It feels like the soleus more than a gastrocnemius. Um, so if you are able to go into kind of a demi point, yeah, there's a lot more stability training there. Whereas this sets you back, it kind of stretches through the back of the leg a little bit more. This really activates your core in another way. Uh, and that's probably the best that I could do. But I definitely feel a lot of interesting stability recruitment from that. This, this is one of the things I really want to make clear. I'm really, really excited that you ask these questions, even if I kind of be like, ugh, more stuff to answer. But here's the cool part. I don't know. I just learned something because you asked the question. And you investigating and asking questions leads all of us to learning more. It's kind of like that saying there are no stupid questions. I think there are stupid questions, but I think they have to be asked with a stupid intent. If you are truly asking to learn, that's really helpful. I'm like Abra last night just asking, wait, is this extreme ownership? Is this extreme ownership? Is this extreme why, ownership? Why because she just wanted to ask the questions to drive me quite crazy, not to actually learn anything. Excuse me, I also did want to see what your reasoning was. Yeah, just like the beta, debate Olympics there. Um, any other questions? says, I'm so not that flexible to get to my head to my knee. Yeah, okay. Mo Dude, do I look like I'm not flexible yet? Well, okay, the head to the knee thing, almost. But I've also been doing it for like 15 freaking years. It takes time. But if you do it consistently, and these types of less, more low impact exercises you can do almost every day, you still want to have some muscle recovery, you can get there. You know, and in old Kung Fu standards, you're supposed to train every day for like 100 days at a time while also maintaining sobriety and celibacy. Have fun with that. You're not supposed to have fun, it's a point. <laughs> you gotta make it fun. All right, uh, is that it for questions? For now. Make sure you guys are stretching out. Um, who do we even have in here? Check in, say hi, I wanna know. Oh, yep, I totally lost my own feet again. All right, I got it. No, that's fine, it's beautiful. That just means that I pay attention to the OBS, which is in real time, which allows me to kind of see what I'm doing a bit better anyways. Um, one of these days I'll figure out what that issue is with Facebook, but. So who's here? Who do we know is here? Renard. Renard. I think we'll back a How many numbers do we have right now? Five. Five's pretty good. I'm excited. <laughs> Three, two, one. Uh, yeah, I mean, this has been a much shorter episode, so I'd probably like to end it on that.
This is the morning routine classic. These are pretty much the core exercises or the flow of the exercises that I determined, uh, I think, wake you up, activate you, get your flexibility going. Uh, Patrick I... Boyer, sorry. Oh, hey, Patrick. Good to see you, bone man. Um, I, I really believe, like, for instance, I have a total body weightlifting workout that I have to do uh, later today. It's going to be a pain. But even if I don't go straight from this into that workout, if I allow my body a little bit of time to kind of just recover, what I want to do is I still want to move around. I don't really want to sit on the couch for too long. I don't want to just, like, go back into lazy mode. My body's nice and activated. I can kind of keep that up just a little bit. And then when I get to my lifting workout, things are gonna be a lot safer and more secure because all the different parts of my body have been woken up, including because we added a little bit more effort to the Savat workout, my cardiovascular system. So now I'm gonna be injecting a lot more oxygen into my blood and bringing out all that power to another level. Uh, I don't believe in doing the stuff if you're not trying to get at least a little bit stronger. I'm not asking you to become uh, an actual superhero. I mean, if you're capable of it, by all means, go for it. But we all have a lot of potential. We have genetic potential. We have emotional, psychological, mental potential. We have so many ways of breaking barriers. That there's no reason that we shouldn't try just a little bit. It might not be your goal in life, but it will certainly help you achieve whatever your goal in life is. Ever since I started getting back into working out, right after Thanksgiving, uh, across December, holiday food around Christmas, blah, blah, blah. and then now doing another program that I'm about six or seven days into, my brain has just been more organized. My thoughts have been more organized. I'm getting more done. Uh, I'm still spending a lot of time working out, but that time still feels like it's productive, and I know that it is. I'm also going to bed a lot earlier because <laughs> I'm wiped by the end of the day, which is a good feeling. So there's no reason not to at least do a little bit more or at least a little bit at all. Because remember, anything, any amount is exponentially, is infinitely more than zero. So with that, I will leave everybody to their own devices. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, any concerns, if you'd like to sign up for the Virtual Hero Academy with the super affordable price and open scheduling options, that's there for you to keep growing alongside of us. I think at least most of the people that are here for Morning Routine are already signed, already signed up for that. Morning Routine will probably keep going on even while we have Virtual Hero Academy because I want people to know that we're still giving away some of this stuff for free, and it's probably a good way to advertise the stuff that isn't free. Uh, like, subscribe, all the stuff on the YouTubes, on the Facebooks, check us out on the Instagrams. It's all there for you. All that content is there to inspire you and help you grow. All right, with that said, I'm going to end the stream. So thank you everybody for some wonderful work today. I appreciate it, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.